Kyle, to start with you, uh, I mean, you guys have been in so many finals at this point. Does playing these big games, winning, playing these games, become a habit? Is there you know, a certain familiarity with the big stage that kind of helps you guys? I mean, I think it's like anything in life, when you go through something, you can draw on that experience. Um, obviously, the lead up to these games, there's a little bit more, more noise. Um, the stuff you kind of dreamed about as a kid, so it's, it's exciting, but ultimately it just comes down to the, to the game. Ultimately, finals are kind of crap when you really look at it. It's, uh, you look to moments for sure when, when guys do something special, but it's really just about who's willing to do what on the day and get it done. It comes down to little details and, and effort, but yeah, when, when you play in these over and over and over, you, you draw on those experiences of, that, of those feelings that you have going into it just to, to kind of calm yourself down, know what's uh, expected and, and what to look forward to. Alessandro, you know, for yourself, you're going in to try and win a fourth straight one of these. Um, you know, how do you kind of personally continue to motivate when you're in these big games, you're going into these finals, when you know that you've done it so many times before? Um, I think when you win it, it actually motivates you a little more. I think you want that feeling over and over again. Um, and obviously playing with such good players, you see the quality that we have and the, the opportunity that we have, and you don't really want to want to do anything other than win. It's kind of contagious, so it becomes easier in my opinion. Hey Kyle, obviously you were part of that forever first group that came here and won in 2019. And you just got off the pitch. I'm wondering how it's holding up. I know you're not you're no stranger to cold weather football, and we're actually maybe in the double digits tomorrow. But just how's the grass out there? Yeah, no, it's great. I think it's better than we all probably expected or, or worried what it could have been on a, on a day in November like this. But uh, the weather's fantastic. It's a, a good grass pitch, and hopefully it holds up uh, tomorrow. I'd like to ask both of you, if I may, and maybe I'll start with you, Ali. We asked uh, Shamit Shom earlier just about what makes this opponent, and, and in your case specifically, the midfield such a, a, a pu jigsaw puzzle. What do you enjoy about this matchup, and, and how would you describe uh, the group of midfielders you're going to play tomorrow? Um, I think, first off, Calgary is always a very combative team. I think that's the hardest thing to play against in the midfield. You always want to play football on the ground, but sometimes it becomes a battle. I think that's the biggest thing. You have to earn the right to play. I think then they just have quality players in the midfield that can move the ball around. I think they're a good team in possession, and that obviously goes through the midfield a lot. So we just have to be prepared to suffer sometimes off the ball, and then when we have it, do what we can with it. Go, Tim. Yeah, I think they do a, a decent job of creating overloads, and uh, they have guys who are dynamic, and when you have guys who are a little bit of a game changer, it, it just means you have to pay that much more attention, right? Um, they have things that they clearly work on week in and week out, and, and when they're firing, it's, it's very effective. So we have to be, be ready for that. Thank you both. <coughs> Kyle, my question here uh, for you is uh, you've been through this final. You've played this team many times. You've been at home and have had success there, but now you're heading into a hostile environment. Somewhere you've had success, of course, uh, here at Spruce Meadows. So for you, what is that like to kind of maybe enthrone that villainous role, if you will, and uh, help your team uh, see if you can succeed on Saturday. I don't really know if you can be the villain if you're winning all the time. I think it's kind of flipped there, no? But we as a collective have had success here, and uh, I'm a byproduct of that. Um, I'm not a guy who can come in here and say, I'm just going to dribble everyone. That's not my strong suit, so I feed off the, the guys and the good players that we have in the room. And when we're playing as a, a collective, I think we are a very good squad. Um, obviously, this is a fun place to play. It's a good venue. They have fantastic support. They've had fantastic support since 2019, and it's great to play in these games. These are what you want to do, right? Um, these guys love to love to cheer for me, so I'm sure Saturday will be no different. Maybe just a quick follow-up. It's what about this series, this team, this environment that brings the best out of you? I don't know. I think there's just the competitive games that that uh, that you want to play in. Um, I'm someone I, I kind of pride myself on my engine. That's something that gives me success over the years. And I know when I'm kind of moving and I, and I have that good feeling in a game that as the, ga the game goes on, I know that I'm going to find myself an opportunity. And that's something that's uh, worked for me in the past. And hopefully we can keep going. Kyle, uh, Tommy admitted that they may have the rights to be favorites based on playing at home and how well they've played lately and beating you a couple of weeks ago. Who do you think are the favorites? I mean, we got a few more trophies than they do, so like it's us but ultimately um they've had a fantastic season they beat us a few weeks ago um they're hosting the final and if that's what uh if that's what they think then take it i mean as bobby said i think uh the pressure's on them to be honest we have four of these at home this is our sixth final we can lose and we'll be all right 
it's not the, the intention of anyone in the room by any means. It's a, it's a big game. We're looking forward to it, but we're kind of playing with house money at the moment, so we'll see. Just to follow up, Alessandro, to you, you're trying to win, obviously, a fourth in a row. What does this club mean to you when you came over, and what did you realize right away that has allowed you to continue to play in games like this? Yeah, it took me about a week of being at the club to kind of knew it was the right decision. I think that's the easiest way to put it. Um, I came over, saw the quality in all facets of the, of the club, the players, the coaches, the facility, the ability to play in these games and the experience they have in these games. I think at the end of the day, you always want to play with the best team. And I think that's what we've become. That's what this team is. That's what this club is. And they keep pushing the standards. We keep pushing the standards. And tomorrow's another big game for that. Alex. Alessandro, uh, you first. Um, you know, both teams love to hold the ball. The two top possession teams in the league. Yourself as a, as a DN who gets on the ball a lot. Does that, you know, excite you knowing that you can get the, 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 your foot on the ball a lot early? That's good for the team. That's good to, to kind of get an ed early edge in that battle. Yeah, I think obviously whoever has the ball can score. I think that's the the main thing of having the ball. I think possession is kind of a stat that kind of goes both ways. I don't know if it's necessarily the one that decides the game, but if you have the ball, then you're creating chances. I think as a midfield, we do have players that can create with the ball, so that helps us. And as the number six, that's my job to kind of get the ball from defenders and kind of go forward from there. So we're going to try to keep the ball, try to create chances is the most important thing. And from there, we'll see how it goes. Kyle, we've seen a lot of uh, evolution in your game uh, through the six years in the league. And this year, we really see you dominate that left side of midfield. Against Cavalry, their right side's quite aggressive. You're kind of looking forward to making some of those late runs and trying to maybe take advantage of those spaces? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we know we've had success with late runs in the box. If we continue to get in those half spaces, the extended half spaces in, uh, in that final third, that we're going to have success. That's something we pride ourselves on, and we know if we do over and over and over, we're going to get ourselves a, a better opportunity to score goals. And uh, that's the responsibility of the 8 and the 10 in, our, in our, uh, the way that we play. So. Yeah, have to do it. Have to be able to be ready to put in a big shift. As you said, they have a fantastic right side of the field that's created a ton for them this year. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. Anyone else? overall in the last six years yeah I think he's an underrated player I think in the grand scheme of Canadian football I don't think you find many players that can use their left and right foot as easily as he can I think as a person off the field I think that's why he has the armband in our team obviously the quality oozes but the person off the field the leader in the locker room is is beyond that I think we were very lucky this club has been very lucky to have him and we just hope to, to help him in his last final years playing to lift a couple more trophies I don't know, man. I'm just trying to enjoy it while it lasts. Um, I've said it a few times in the lead up to this game. Finals aren't guaranteed. I know it sounds a little like a bit of a broken record with us, um, but everyone at the start of every single season has the same goal. We've just been uh, very lucky, and and definitely I'm grateful to be in as many as that we've been in, and just want to kind of soak it all in. Bex, this one is for you. Uh, what's the tactical component? that you feel needs to be present tomorrow to make sure you're lifting that trophy? Yeah, I think we've got to be smart in the middle of the field. Um, it's no secret um, when they press, they throw a lot of numbers at the ball. Um, they're, they're aggressive, they're on the front foot. And if we're sloppy in the middle of the field and create a little bit of a sort of counterattack opportunities for them when we're, when we're stretched, it, uh, it can become a little bit of a, a game of chance, really. So I think we've got to be smart in, the, in our buildup take advantage of those uh, those wide spaces and definitely try and play our football in their half. And the last question for me, just uh, you love to creep on the left side, hated playing against you because of that, because you found yourself on the touchline. How rejuvenated do you feel now having Para and Benny Benavanga on that left side to just partner with now? Yeah, I think we've we've shown over the course of the season that this team, unlike uh, teams in Forges past, we have a, a little bit more depth and a, a, just a ton of creative weapons throughout the lineup. So. I think when you've seen guys step in who haven't really been playing much, you, we throw a little something different at it, which is, uh, which is an incredible thing for us to have, right? We, we can throw different options at different teams, keep guys on their toes, whether it's Malik playing on the left, center back, Daniel playing, Benny playing up top as a nine on the wing, whoever it may be. 
we've shown that we can throw a different, uh, a, a few different things at, at teams to keep on their toes. So I'm confident whoever we're playing with that uh, we'll be able to get the job done, however we line up and whatever the formation is. Go ahead, Mitchell. Yeah, um, listen, winning a 28-game season is, is definitely easier said than done. There's a ton of up and downs. A lot of things have to go your way. The, through the duration of a season, everyone goes through so much, like the ebbs and flows of, of the individual, the collective, the staff, everything. It's, it takes a lot of buy-in to do it. Um, anyone who does it, obviously, uh, I tip my hat to them because it's, it's a lot, right? And uh, to be able to do that, give ourselves the, the opportunity to play in Champions League next year is huge. Obviously, it was a goal for us at the beginning of the season, so to come together as a collective and, and do that and have that buy-in throughout the season is massive. Obviously, now we have, uh, we're looking forward to, to doing something no one's done yet, and we'll see what happens. Just a final one for me. Um, you both were nominated last night for Player of the Year. Your teammate, Tristan Board, just, won it, just wanted to give you both an opportunity to, to tell us why he was the worthy winner. Uh, what a player, man. The season he's had, he said it himself yesterday. I think um, for those who've been in the league, you saw what he was capable of in 2019. I think uh, he goes over to Europe. It didn't necessarily work out. And people will probably make their own opinions and, and assumptions of, how, of, of why or how that happened. And I think uh, as an individual, it's always tough to, to pick yourself up after things don't necessarily go your way. And to see him come back in and, and the work that he's put in, building off what he did last year, I was, you saw like sparks of it, moments, and to put it all together and, and show the quality that he still has and, and the belief that all of us players have in him in the locker room, it's fantastic. So I think it's, it's more than deserving that he won it. He's, he was the player of the year for me, without a doubt. I think anyone on our team would have said the same thing. Watching him week in and week out in training has been fantastic. And to see him playing with a smile on his face and a little bit of that chip on his shoulder that he had before that we all knew is, is great. Can't add much more than that, but I'll say we scored 45 goals. He had 15 goal contributions. That's almost a third of all our goals. I mean, special player, scores big goals for us, big moments, and wins us games. I think that's the player of the year right there. Anyone else? Okay, thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We will look forward to seeing you tomorrow at the final. Hamilton! Hamilton!